If you can't beat them, join them. Good morning, everybody. Andrew Steele here. It's another beautiful day. I'm back in Fountain Hills, Arizona, and wanted to take this morning to kind of give you guys a whole recap on my meeting with the Numar executive. And I've been getting tons of comments and even a, a, another YouTuber that I have a ton of respect for, David Bott, was shooting me some texts. He's a good friend of mine as well. And we were texting back and forth a little yesterday. He was uh, asking why I didn't ask a few questions and wasn't a little more critical of the Numar executive. I just wanted to take this morning to kind of fill you guys in on that whole trip. I didn't go to Indiana just to try to interview a Numar executive. That was completely by chance and I definitely had to bang on some doors and I got really lucky and just am very thankful to John Samut, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Numar for taking that time to fill me in and fill all of you in on their whole thoughts on, on everything. So that was really cool of him. David uh, was wondering why I wasn't a little more critical. A lot of you that know my channel really well I've made a couple videos in the past uh, being really critical of Newmar, and it was kind of, you know, just walking around like pointing out little flaws on a new Essex. Now, one of the things that I forgot to mention in that video is, is that Essex already has 14,000 miles on it. I could walk around any RV and sit and just pick apart flaws. For me to do that to a new Mara, I did it because it was like the top of the food chain and it was my client's rig and I only had a couple hundred subscribers and it was a real convenient video to make. But now I've got like over 8,000 subscribers. And for me to just make videos going around picking apart RVs, it's just not fair. Now, if I was to go to every RV and pick them apart, it would be fair but i thought that out of respect for newmar they let me come into their home spoke to me let me know everything going on that it was just only right to take down some kind of childish videos of me just like picking apart minor flaws and i may make some more videos just talking about that newmar essex and the problems it's had and, and what they did to get through it but really i think a lot of that was was kind of just minor flaws and every single RV has flaws. So I could be the guy that sits around and picks apart every RV, but I don't want to do that. Now I'm still going to report to you guys like major problems or something. If I see, see it, or, you know, if there, if I see any injustice or, um, you know, someone being done wrong, I think it's fair to share it with you guys, but it just wasn't fair for me to just make videos. Oh, look, this little door gap is off a little bit. And then, you know, I did leave the one up that I've compared it to a Prevo. So if you want to see why you spend another million and a half for a Prevo, that video is still up, but uh, there's a couple videos that, that got taken down out of respect for Newmar. So I know a lot of people will probably uh, give me a, a real hard time about that, but that's that's where I'm coming from. To give you my background with Winnebago, if you go look back at one of my very first uh, videos, it was a Winnebago Brave review. I actually had the chance to use a Winnebago Brave for a couple years, a 2016 gasser. It was purchased brand new by a family member of mine and they weren't using it. So I worked out a deal to rent it and I used that rig. So you've got the full review. I actually gave them a positive review. I talked about like a couple minor little problems, but I was really happy with that rig, uh, using it for a couple years, taking it all over, putting miles on it. I took it out to Quartzsite and met up with David Bott. If any of you were at Uberfest in Quartzsite, a couple years ago, I was out there in that Winnebago Brave. So I, you know, I don't have any, any bones to pick with Winnebago. Now, some of you, if you're a real uh, savvy YouTube watcher and you've really looked back at a lot of RV videos, several years ago, it's probably four or five years ago now, David Bott had an incident at Winnebago where he was, he had a tour of 42 GD on order and there was some, some weight issues and he was really, really critical of them. And he was expecting a really high quality product. He was basically expecting a Newmar for the price of a Winnebago. And I think what happened was, you know, the story that's been told to me is basically they told him that we're not gonna be able to build a co coach that's gonna meet your expectations. And he went and bought a Tiffin and he's got all kinds of, you know, videos of him and his Allegro bus and really great folks. But I think what happened there is David is, he's a client of mine too. And, and I appreciate him as a small business owner, someone that wants to know your whole process and everything and he even mentioned he made a video reacting to the this Newmar Winnebago acquisition and they weren't very happy about it and I think a lot of that is because of you know he says because of the way he was treated by Winnebago keep in mind so so David is is a very um, savvy savvy buyer and he really wants to 
educate his viewers and, and really learn as much as possible on any product. Like even when you know when he we washed his RV, he had a drone flying around following us when we're you know all over and. Uh, you know, it was really cool. Now, I appreciate that because I really take pride as a detailer and to have someone like that that really appreciates all the little tiny details that I do, um, it, it's just awesome. Now, I, I'm a small business owner and I, I take pride in work and I was, you know, just getting going, but I can see how certain people, they just, they don't feel that they owe it to the customer to share all of that stuff. And I, I do, you know, I enjoy it and I'm passionate about what I do, but a lot of businesses really get turned off when they have to do extra work because it does it does require a lot of extra time and a lot of extra work. And David even told me, you know, that we, we talked about, you know, Tiffin, recently made it so that people can't go and, and watch the factory like when david's coach was getting built he had cameras set up and he was there and he even told me that it probably cost them a lot of money in productivity and time by him there asking questions and i think winnebago probably just got a little bit worn down and they realized that this guy is just gonna you know, really hold us to a certain standard that a, a $300,000 or $400,000 coach, uh, the Winnebago Tour is, you know, it's uh, I think three or 400 grand. I can't remember. This was four or five years ago, but it was, you know, it's expensive, but it's not a uh, $830,000 Essex or, you know, close to million dollar King Air. So I think if he would have bought a Newmar King Air, um, I think that the Newmar, and I think if he still buys a Newmar, even if it's a Dutch star or a Mountain Air, I think that the Newmar Service Center is more geared to be able to accommodate uh, folks, uh, customers that are that demanding. Now, fortunately, all customers aren't as you know as um, I wouldn't say demanding, but they just want to know. Uh, they want to know what's going on. Now, if every customer was like David Bott and came in and wanted to ask me every question about how we wash and wax an RV. I wouldn't make any money because all of my time would be spent explaining all of this stuff. So I think sometimes, you know, customers and I've done it with certain customers too, where they wear you down and you say, look, I, this just isn't going to be a profitable transaction for me. We're geared more towards the three and $400,000 coaches. And David, you need to go spend six or 700 and get something where they're able to give you just a little more time and a little more attention. So. That's answering David's question. He was wondering why I didn't ask the Newmar about, you know, that all of that. So I think David just had a bad experience with Winnebago, and, and that's why I think he had a bad experience. I don't think anyone's to blame. It's just uh, a managing customer expectations is my opinion. Now, I have a ton of respect for David. Absolutely appreciate him. He made a, a YouTube video that really helped put my detail business to the next level. Just brought a ton of people, and I've met a lot of great people through that. To back to Newmar and back to the Newmar executive, I was in the community and talked to all kinds of people. Obviously, if I was able to get in the door to the executive offices, I had to definitely meet a lot of people and really, um, you know, I didn't know anyone up there. So. I originally, when I went up there, I was originally planning on, on just going with my buddy. He said, hey, I'm going to Newmar to pick up my Essex. You should come pick it up. Let's, you know, make some YouTube videos. And really, he just needed me to help uh, uh, load up the stack or trailer and probably wanted a little bit of moral support. So I was like, yeah, you know what? I want to go up there. And I knew I wasn't going to be able to get in a lot of places. And, and it's really tight up there. It's, there's not a lot of content to make YouTube videos because everything is very guarded. So was really awesome of, of the Newmar executive, John Samut, to take the time and, and let me make a YouTube video and really made that trip worthwhile. But I was actually just going up there just to help my buddy, you know, just kind of hang out and have a good time and uh, ended up making some really good connections. Huge thanks to John Moore for getting me set up with that interview over there at Newmar. And I knew I was gonna be able to get in over at Dean Lauk's place. Dean had already told me that I was welcome to come visit his facility. So between going to Dean's place and you know hanging out with my buddy and helping load the stacker trailer i always enjoy doing that kind of stuff it's fun just to be around all the rv stuff and i knew that i was going to be in rv country and maybe learn a couple things the bonus deal so monday morning when i saw that new mar sold I, I i had thought about making the trip and i'm like all right i knew i had to make the trip so i, I was thinking about making the trip but when i saw that I, I bought a plane ticket and i was there you know tuesday tuesday evening and and wednesday thursday making connections and was really lucky Friday afternoon to, to get that interview. So my thoughts on the whole deal, the Amish community is 
still using horse and buggies they are not they don't like change it's you know they're they're very set in their ways they have a lot of pride in their work they don't cut corners i can tell you that they really um are some of the hardest working people i've met we were at a, another place um one of the kids that was working like a 15 year old kid helped us wash my buddy's rv the kid really impressed me he uh we asked if we could just use their their power washer and their di water and they were very nice just to let us use that but on a bonus one of the kids just came in and i think it was the owner's son so he started helping us work and i felt bad i'm like we're taking labor away from these guys but hey you know the kid kid was happy to help they didn't have a lot going on so that was that was really cool but he he was working and my buddy said hey uh you know there's this really cool pit bike um we're gonna load the stacker trailer later if you're around you know you could take the pit bike you know for a couple hot laps you know kind of as a thank you for helping us wash the rv and he said i gotta go cut tonight and i'm like cut he's like oh yeah i gotta go cut corn and uh i guess he's gonna go cut corn until one in the morning so the guy was helping working working his tail off at the rv dealership and then was gonna go cut corn all night just hard working people but what even impressed me even more is they noticed a couple minor like silicone or like a screw loose on a just minor minor stuff um you know these coaches rattled down the, lo the road and there was like a little like a a mesh piece in the back that was just a little bit loose and um, I don't think Newmar ever knew it was loose and it's not Newmar's fault at all but this 15 year old kid was ready to go get you know screws or zip tie you know he he had worked on these rigs and he was ready to go try to help my buddy fix his Newmar Essex so that was really cool to see just that type of work ethic in that community is going to be really hard to be broken and it'll be really interesting to see how everything unfolds I liked Winnebago before this. I actually like Newmar more now after going there, seeing the community, getting a whole feel for how everything works there. I, I, I definitely have a lot more appreciation for their uh, pride and the, and the community is just such a high, the morals of the community. People really carry themselves well and you can really tell. And, you know, I, I met some of the Amish people and they were just nice guys and, you know, just hardworking, nice guys, very well spoken, carried themselves well and hardworking people. So um, I don't think that I don't think that there's going to be a lot of change. I'm making public statements. So let's see. We'll, we'll do a video in, in a couple of years. I, I think we're I think Newmar is going to going to continue to be the same. And um, I think it's awesome for the Miller family to get a paycheck as the RV industry is in kind of a, a, a decline right now. And they made it through two recessions and we don't know what the economy is looking like. The RV industry could get a little, it's already gotten a little bit shaky. And usually that's one of the first indicators of a possible recession. And I don't, I'm not speculating on anything, but you, you never know. So for them to, to cash out, very wise, I think, and then very classy for them to sell to Winnebago instead of some of the other larger corporations that would have paid them more. They sold for three hundred and forty four million dollars and and that's you know a lot of money, but really, for a company of that size, that's not that big and and the executive that I interviewed flat out said to my face, he said, "We could have sold for more money to other larger companies out there corporations i don't have to name he said there was three or four other you know that they could have gotten more money but they really thought that winnebago was the best fit going forward so and i, I believe it you know there's there's some big corporations i don't have to name them but they're snapping up these rv companies and winnebago like like john samut said winnebago's from another small town in iowa and uh, mars from a small town in indiana and hopefully they're able to uh link up and uh make you know continue to make awesome coaches and i need them they they make some of the best coaches out there so uh, i can't just tour prevos all day you know there's got to be something else so uh greatly appreciate all of you for watching today's video make sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos keeping you in the loop on the whole rv scene hope you're all having a great day